Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Barefoot Life. I hope you are absolutely fabulous. Doesn't matter where in the world you are watching or if you are part of our sunny South African Choco family, sit back, relax, enjoy. And as I always say, see me as the instrument to inspire and create something that fits your desires, your color trends, something that you like and see this as an inspirational creative session. I'm Nadine Mama Choco and I am live in our new to be Choco Paint Store in St. Francis in the Eastern Cape. We are hard at work, busy with unpacking boxes, pricing items and being creative in the store. There hasn't been much time to plan the ses session, so I'm going to see it as a creative session that I'm doing with you, that I'm experiencing with you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. What we are going to do today is we are working on an already painted surface that we have painted in cloud white. Something that we do recommend is when you paint with whites, yellows or reds on a darkish surface like this is to first paint a base coat in a medium grey, a colour like stone wash in the chocolate range works perfectly and then you apply your cloud white or divots or your yellow or red. In the paint industry in general, whites, yellows, reds are weaker colour pigments. So I've already cleaned my surface with lacquer thinners, we've already done the painting the color on top is cloud white and now we are going to start with a stencil application because I'm using something that I'm, I'm extremely proud of is to be South African we have a beautiful very sunny country um, I'm using our national flower the putia as the stencil for today's inspiration and I'm going to show you how the application is done so here I've already applied my first coat, but I'm going to show you for those that don't know how the application is done. It's a pattern repeat stencil, so I've started from the top and I'm moving down. Important is to maybe just allow for your previous stencil um, work to just dry a bit before you start with the next application. And I overlap a section where the two stencils will meet. I don't have masking tape with me because I don't know where it is. I scoop some paste and I'm going to show you what the jar looks like. This is the stencil of Paris paste. So this paste creates um, an embossed look and feel on your stencil pattern. So I'm going to apply this on top of my stencil pattern. And as always, I do it smoothly, evenly. There are so many various uses and applications for the stencil paste. If you go to our YouTube channel, there are numerous videos that you can watch where we share more ideas and inspiration. It's Choco Paint, and you will find it on YouTube. So I scrape. I will now complete this stencil design. I just want to make sure that the process makes sense. So I make sure it's done evenly, smoothly. And I will continue to do the entire pattern. And then once I've completed this stencil, I will allow a few minutes, like half an hour for that to dry and I will repeat the pattern until the pattern is everywhere. I don't want for this um, technique a very smooth application. I actually do want to create some roughness, some unevenness. So on this section where I have already applied my first coat and have already allowed for my first um, stencil coat to dry properly. Now how long does the stencil of Paris paste takes to dry? It depends on the thickness of your application but also on the weather. If it's a cloudy, humid day, 
everything takes longer to dry. So just be patient, two to four hours, and then you repeat the process. So I'm going to reapply on the dry section my stencil work again. So let me just find the pattern, put it back in position. and I apply another coat. This time I do it a bit more thicker so that I have more detail on my stencil surface. If you hear any background noises, we are working very close to the harbour and um, Everyone is cheerful and joyful at this time of day because it's going home time. Okay, so there's my application. It's nice and thick. It's not a perfect application. I can later sand maybe. I haven't pre-planned anything. So we are going to work together and see how this turns out. And I remove. So the application is done nice and thick. I will also allow for that second coat of base to dry properly before I start with the next section and the next step of this technique. What I have done is I have secured my edges on my cupboard course. I now want to do a wash technique with some masking tape. A tip of advice, if you have a newly painted surface, your masking tape can't be applied to newly painted surfaces as it will remove the paint um, from a newly painted surface you need to allow for the paint to dry overnight before you apply masking tape or just remove some of the stickiness of your masking tape by sticking it to some fabric and then apply it to your surface just to prevent it from removing paint from a newly painted surface just tip now we are going to be playful. What I have in front of me is Davet. This is our antique white color. I also have Comfort's Blue. Now remember you will use colors that work in your space that goes well with your decor style. This is Fine Lining. And I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I have some matte black. Let's see how it goes. Next, I have some tap water. I have a normal paint brush. Any, any texture. I'm using a Hamilton's fiberglass 75 millimeter. You can use anything. This is a creative session, so nothing needs to be perfect. We are going to do a paint technique. I have an artist brush, maybe for weather distressing if I see fit, but I'll explain if I apply the technique. And I have some normal kitchen sponges. I'm going to use the sponge side, not the coarse side. Okay, now let the fun and game start. I am going to wet my brush. Now I am painting all the time, so my paint doesn't get time to be contaminated. If you work now on a project, you want to put your paint away maybe in two weeks or a month's time, continue, rather pour out paint as you need it instead of adding water to your paint as water will contaminate your paint. But I'm busy painting for a store, so I am being um, very courageous with my paints. I wet my brush. There's some paint on it, and for this technique, I'm going to wash and place. I'm working with a paintbrush, wet paintbrush, for a washed technique on a very rough surface. So the reason I'm adding water 
is because it's a technique. With chalker, you don't need to add water to create a smooth finish. You, if you paint normal, just do normal painting, you just work from the jar. But this is a technique. This is playful. I've applied some stencil of Paris space here and there where I did this application just to create some more texture on my surface. And this is my base. So I reach in there with my comforts blue and some water and this is actually my base coat on my textured surface. I have to work with a paintbrush for this as there, there's so much um, unevenness and roughness that I do want to reach in all the crevices and grooves. I'm just going to do that section so that the process makes sense. But for the final styled version, I will have the cupboard complete. This reminds me of that wall I once did where Yaku was doing the video work and he was so anxious behind the screens. I wish you could see his face. Today I am very fortunate. I have my two left and right hands and feet with me in the store. Crystal and Lee flew to the Eastern Cape this morning. They are spending time with me for the next week so that we can plan our creative year and it's a lovely privilege to have them with me. Crystal is behind the camera today. Lee is answering the Facebook questions. And I feel so blessed to have a part of the team with me. For the rest of you, I'm honestly, truly, sincerely missing you. Okay, so this is now the first coat. Comforts blue that's on here. I want it in all the crevices and grooves. I also diluted it with water so it's not solid but that it's more of a washed look. Okay, next I'm going to dampen a my kitchen sponge with some normal water. I'm taking some fine lining and I am adding it to my sponge. And I'm just washing, dabbing to create a lighter shade. A darker comforts blue sitting at the back. Right at the end, I will remove the masking tape just to make sure that. Um, all the edges are done beautifully. I'll also show you where the stressing because that's something that I am going to apply on the surface. And now so. So I'm playing around and I'm altering between light and dark so it's fine lining 
is comforts blue if you want to create some darker areas and if you really want to incorporate some light tones I will make use of Davet and see this as a canvas you're working on you are the artist you can be playful you can make mistakes and you can fix them and there's no such thing as mistakes in art it's a process and embrace the process the main thing is work with bare feet be rooted be grounded and enjoy it I'm just going to add some light let me use a third sponge you can just rinse them out and use one you don't need to have three I'm just using it to save time and also important if you really want to see some change between light and dark just allow for the one color to dry before you start applying the next I'm actually now blending colors together due to the fact that I can't have you sit and watch as the paint dries so I'm just now playing with white and light and the texture that we've created in the beginning is actually so stunning So let me just show you how I've created the texture over here so it makes sense. When I did my stencil of Paris application, I actually just scraped some stencil of Paris here and there onto the surface. Very little, so it just creates more texture for once I'm applying my wash technique, that it's not a flat surface, but a texturized surface I'm working on. Also a lovely technique to use on canvas if you create art. Okay, and I'm going to be playful. If you have a question, is your store open yet? There's a question, is the store open yet? No, it's not officially open yet. I hope to open the store on the 21st of February which is this coming Monday in a week's time. Holding thumbs that everything will be ready by then. But we have had so many people coming in. I even signed a book for VT yesterday while I was busy in a budget Zoom meeting. So you are more than welcome. If you see me here, pop in, come say hi. It's lovely to meet everyone, but we hope to be open on the 21st of February. Another question. If they were to use Maestro for this technique, what other colors could they use? Okay, there's a question. If we use Maestro with this technique, what are the colors? You can maybe use some Olivia Spale, Maestro and Davet. Then you have the same light, um, which is Olivia Spale, a lighter version, Maestro, and then Davet, which will be your light color to wash on top. So Maestro, Olivia Spale, Davet. Okay, now, just for a final touch, I'm going to use and piece of 80 grit sandpaper. I'm tearing off a piece just to have more control. And I'm holding it flat in my hand and sorry for the noise. And I'm just sanding just to accentuate some of the texture on the surface. If you see your sandpaper is really dirty, just move to a cleaner section. And this is actually why we applied a double coat of stencil of Paris. So that there is really proper detail on the surface. The sanding I will also only do once the paint has dried completely. So that you can just blow and the dust will be removed. But now I'm sanding on wet paint. So I will dust with a, with a clean paint brush. So best will be wait for the paint to dry and only sand them. 
but look how stunning this is where distressing I'm going to show next but I'll show it on the detail over there so that um, you understand the technique but that's something that I will apply in the detail over here once I have completed washing my surface if you stand close to the areas that's flat just wash over that and that's why I say it's so easy to fix things so there I've sanded on my flat surface I literally, literally use my wet finger and just remove the sand marks okay so I hope this process makes sense I can't wait to finish it now for the wet distressing part over there I'm using a piece of mutton cloth this can be an old t-shirt it can be any loose rag used rag that you have first step is to wet it with water remove it. excess water I fold it like a ball in the palm of my hand I'm going to use Comfort's Blue Artist Brush Damp Cloth Paint in the color of your choice Advice or a tip When doing paint techniques it's always most effective if you work with contrast So light colors and dark colors So on my surface I have very light cloud white I'm now adding Comfort's Blue artist brush I paint it in the crevices I take my damp cloth and I wipe away and I apply pressure on the flat areas so that the detail and the color sits in the grooves and crevices So this is called wet distressing. How stunning is that? So very subtly I'm changing the color of just being white to something with touch of detail and color. So exactly what I'm busy doing here we have done on this furniture piece over here so here we've painted with fine lining and did the wet distressing also with comforts blue in the grooves and crevices okay, I'm going to complete my furniture piece remember if I stand back always allow for your paint to dry stand back and then decide where you want to make any changes I already can see that I want to add more light here and there and then I will just use my divot and add more light I am not even going to apply my clear glaze on this piece um, because it's a decorative piece it's not in a kitchen bathroom or outside um, Choco has a built-in sealant so if you want to make the surface water resistant UV resistant more stain resistant you can do the glaze application there are videos on our YouTube channel that shows the application so just go there or you, if you need the link just ask and we'll send it and then my message for the week is the following life is filled with change I've experienced it in a very short while very um that it's very true but then I, I also thought about it and I realized we go through constant change throughout our lives we age and we don't even notice the change so some changes are noticeable others are not but one thing I can assure you of is the fact that we are adaptable we can 
we can we can take change we can live with change we can adapt so embrace change no matter good or bad you will eventually see how things just fall in place and embrace the changes that's happening around you all will be well stay creative this week i hope that you found some inspiration we'll share the final version very soon and thank you for all the support i'll see you next time with more ideas bye